Everyone, welcome back to another episode of Cohesion. And today I'm joined by Jordan Katz. He's the Chief Insights Officer at Simpler. Jordan advises organizations on the influential use of data and analytics to develop strategies that predict outcomes and increase performance. Now, previously, he served as one of the heads of employee experience strategy at Qualtrics. And, and there he was responsible for developing and deploying employee experience impact strategies to help clients achieve their organizational goals through data and analytics. Jordan has consulted hundreds of rapid growth SaaS companies, world-class global organizations. I'm excited to nerd out uh, with Jordan today. Uh, Jordan, thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here and I'm super excited to have joined uh, Simpler this year. Oh, that is, that is awesome. It's probably not fair for me to say nerd out as soon as I see the word data. I mean, it doesn't have no, to be No, no, that's 100% accurate. Yeah. No, oh, okay. no good, disagreement good, good, good. on my end. It's a, just like a <laughs> yeah. fancy way of saying I do math. I like math. I'm not afraid <laughs> by math. I'm still not able to do my daughter's sophomore year high school math anymore. But, you know, <laughs> when it comes to org math, I got people analytics that I can handle. <laughs> that's good that's good i mean because yeah. i've seen Moneyball. it's cool yeah. too right yeah. yeah all right super yeah. keep trying super. to tell my again back to the high schooler if you try to tell my high schooler that i'm cool you get a different response but yes <laughs> Moneyball for organizations i'm gonna predict that something's gonna happen and then if we do the right stuff hopefully that will happen or close to it and then everybody wins and is happy that's that's exactly it that's my job right on Moneyball for organizations well go. i have i have Five, uh, five sort of rapid fire questions to get to know you a little bit Thanks. better. Um, starting at the top, uh, what are the five most opened apps on your phone? Oh God! Do, wait, can, do they have to be like fun apps, or is it like Gmail, Slack? You know, no, I like, yeah, you I like have, Yahoo you Finance. Have to be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the fi have, yeah. I like the finance app. I've got obviously Gmail and Slack. I'm constantly texting people and. There's this other app. It's like it looks like a little like one of these things. I use it to call people because I get tired of texting. Are you familiar with this? You can <laughs> speak to them, you know, not through like typing things. You get to have a full use your voice. I like that. No, one I lot. love it. I, like I at first I saw you sort of mimic what was I like the, the looks phone like a banana. For, yeah, for a second I was like, wow, what is this gonna be? What kind of an app? Yeah. Is this no. going to be? Yeah. No. All right. Calling people. Uh, there's, there's one, there's one more that I think is, uh, is, is fun and interesting. And, and that is, I really spend a decent amount of time as the social media manager for my family. So I'm in charge. I'm super tech support. And that means like, I have to go into Instagram and perfectly curate how amazing our <laughs> life is. <laughs> no one else will do it. They're like, <laughs> Just need to. Everybody needs to know, right? There's, yeah. it's, it's only perfect in our. In our Everyone family. else is too busy to do the <laughs> tech work. That we're, no, I'm just joking. I, I'm super tech support at home. Social media manager, maybe. Is it curated? No, I'm a terrible photographer. You know, constantly getting yelled at. But I do spend a little bit of time on Instagram. Oh, very cool. For, well, I would I would expect that you had studied the algorithm, uh, measured yeah, yeah, every I'm post. Gaming, that I'm comes gaming the whole through. thing. <laughs> right, right. To make sure that you kind of float up to the top. Yeah, um, I wish money, money ball, social media manager for That'd be your amazing. family. <laughs> well, what's the last? Cats fam Instagram is hot. Let me tell you, cats fam. That's even better. Yeah. What's the last? Uh, what's the last book you read? Uh, for work or for fun? Both. Okay, so I'm super into uh, science fiction. And yeah. I've got two favorite authors, Alistair Reynolds and William Gibson. And Alistair Reynolds just came out with a new book in one of the series I like. But it's been like years. So I just reread this book called The Prefect uh, okay. so that I could get ready for the new book. And William Gibson is like, you know, very much a futurist sort of cyberpunk and um, yeah, 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 yeah. the uh, peripheral and um, what was the other one? Agency, maybe? I'm not sure what the last one is called, but the William Gibson yeah, wait, books wait, that just came out. William Gibson, I'm, I could be getting this wrong, and I super apologize. Is it Neuromancer, yep. Johnny Mnemonic, uh, yep. that stuff? Yeah, fantastic. Exactly, and and as a matter of fact, they're I I just heard that they are um, 
finally making a live action or some sort of show about Neuromancer, which is going to be exciting. Oh, very cool. Yeah, it's super applicable now, too. The whole right? like, AI people, superhuman, uh -huh. VR, thing. everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. chips in the, in the skull. <laughs> you can't wait, right? <laughs> Look, exactly. I mean, I, they, I, I'm in. Science Why fiction not? or science fact. Who knows? That, that's right. Elon, if you're listening, uh, exactly. I'm raising my hand. What, how, <laughs> what about for work? What was your last uh, book you read for work? Yeah, Talent Tectonics. I have a good friend, Steve Hunt. He's the chief expert over at SAP for Workplace and Success Factors. And uh, he wrote a book about talent, talent mobility, employee experience, technology, and uh, skills on top, all kinds of stuff that's relevant to right now. And not only is he a good guy, but he's really smart and has been around the block here in HR technology and employee experience strategy for a million oh. years. So uh, real great thought leader, great content, highly recommend. Sounds fantastic. Um, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. There's a, uh, next question, knowing what you do, like, as soon as we say, we've got a, you know, a whole bunch of, whole bunch of listeners that are in comms or HR or whatever, what's the biggest myth or misconception about what you do and the, the field that you're in? I think everybody, uh, feels like other areas of the organization lead when it comes to technology and technology innovations. It's like mm -hmm. uh, the Marcom technology and the you know finance, FinTech. They've got fancy names and everything. <laughs> but in <laughs> actuality, uh, you'd be surprised that HR led the way in technology years and years ago, years ago with like the first business technology was running payroll, right? Mm. And comms, it was on the forefront of technology using email when that first came out. And so the myth that, you know, there's less spend, less tech, less innovation I think is a major myth in actuality, uh, HR technology and internal and, and comms technology oftentimes leads the way and opens doors and leverages the hottest stuff. Um, but uh, others get the, you know, get the credit. What's an insult that you've received that you're proud of? Yeah, uh, I get like you're way too, you have too much energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I come in, I walk in, I... Maybe I, you know, I like to be center of attention. I don't know, but I bring a lot of good energy. And sometimes, <laughs> particularly if you're not as extroverted as I am, like yeah. that's not going to feel great. If I'm like <laughs> zoned in and I'm talking and, you know, animated and whatever, not everybody loves that. And am I aware of that? Mildly. Can I adapt? <laughs> Probably not, but it's in good faith, right? My heart is in the right place and I'll try to be a little bit less you know, in your face, if, if I, if I notice that you're not loving it. Yeah. Oh, you know, we haven't met in person, but now I'm getting the right. sense, like maybe you even have a saunter or a walk when you're really, <laughs> when you're really digging it, when you, when you walk in like a George Jefferson, like just I don't, swing I, that arm I'm not cool in. enough for that. You're giving me too much credit, but I am a very <laughs> fast walker. I'm a very fast walker and it drives some people absolutely insane. I'm probably cause I'm impatient. But on the flip side of that, that serves me well in a number of respects, right? Number one, I like, I think I'm very productive. Like I get stuff done. I'm, you know, when I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. Number two, I, I love doing like this stuff and being on stage and giving speeches yeah. and all that. So like people can, who don't love that can beg that off on me. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, number three, I like to think that my good energy and my optimistic, you know, center hopefully lifts other people up and makes them feel good. Cause I genuinely like, like all the people I work with, I want to be liked and I want them to feel good too. So yeah. Imagine yeah. if I was all energy and mean, that would be terrible. <laughs> that would be just that too would, much anger and mean terrible, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> at least I'm coming from the right end of things. Yeah. Do you uh, <laughs> too much energy and mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. So when you, you Here's here's what I'm here's what I'm excited to get into. So we got the rapid fire out of the way, and we're just gonna jump right in. Simpler has just published. This is their their fifth state of internal communications report. You've been involved with this. You you know this type of stuff. You're able to look at the data, sort of analyze the data, and and see what some of the trends are. In the, in this report, 
um, was there anything that you saw that was surprising? Were there surprising results in this yes. report? Yes, there were three things, but I reserve the right to go on to a fourth. So the first thing that I really like, let's let's be confirmatory about the thing I said the first. Yeah. Pace and adoption of technology, very clear evidence that people in internal communications are already leveraging artificial intelligence to be more productive, to get their work done, to get started on things. And not only that, it's not just that they're leveraging it and using it, but they're actually allowing it to be a strong resource that frees them up to do other things. So not only did people say that, uh, you know, headcount was not necessarily increasing on average yeah. this year, um, but as a matter of fact, headcount is not, you know, necessarily increasing. Uh, and many organizations are seeing a decrease in um, in internal comms headcount, but they're not feeling overwhelmed, right? They they aren't getting more uh, resources. They aren't getting more team members. But as a result of leveraging better tools, leveraging better technology, and the ability to use AI, there's no negative effect, right? That's, so they're able to do more with less. That seems... Uh... It, so it makes sense to me on paper to to see that, but having worked in in internal comms, and I'm not going to say they're all emotional all the time. It's not like I'm working with theater departments, right? But for th for them to say, "Hey, I'm, like I'm able to do this," I'm like I'm not complaining. I'm not saying this is going to restrict my 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 movement or my ability to do work. That's mm -hmm. fascinating to me. Like knowing, and it's the, the first the, time I've really seen it in yeah. IC or HR. So sixty three percent of teams that we surveyed are either going to have the exact same amount of people this year, or they expect to decrease the headcount. But that doesn't normally that would play out like, Oh my gosh, we're feeling burnt out and we're not going to get our the, the, job exactly done. Right. Like we don't yeah. have enough resources, but the overwhelming percent is our feeling that they have the right uh, amount of resources to do their job well this year. And so like when I was re looking through that data and saying like, oh man, we're not getting the the resources we need. We're not getting the people or the headcount we need. Uh, we're going to see a major increase in, uh, you know, disgruntledness or burnout or whatever, right. or people are going to really complain that they're not adequately staffed to handle their organizations. You know, 60% of teams felt like they were fine. Huh. And so that's the first thing that I felt surprising, but also it loops around to say, unlike other areas of the organization, I see is a first adopter or tends to be a rapid adopter of technology, which is great. And as a result, they're in better stead. Now that I'm not talking about every team, but right. if you're in IC, you, sh you know, you have the muscle memory to understand new tech, to leverage it, to get the most out of it you should be striving to continue that momentum. Mm -hmm. The other thing um, is kind of on the negative flip side, right? 40% of IC teams just have no ability, no way, no focus on measuring the efficacy of their actions. Yeah, They yeah, don't yeah. think about like, I'm communicating out, I'm providing resources, I'm giving information, and uh, I'm going to see what the <clears throat> downstream effects of that are. Yeah. It, they don't even have a plan. Like the response not, wasn't just like, we don't know because we can't. It was literally, we don't even attempt. That's, that's not, is that, uh, uh, is that new? Or is that something that like, you're just like, you're surprised. Hey, come on. Like we've got, we've got the tools we could survey. We use marketing metrics. In order to just see, surprised. Like, who, who, yeah, just surprised it's, in it's, that case. It's, yeah. not, it's, it's not new necessarily. Yeah, I think yeah. there's a number of different contributing factors to that. Um, ac accessibility of data, culture, focus. You know, it's not easy to look at I did X, Y, and Z, and then Z, Y, and X were affected. Um, but it is, to me measuring and calibrating based on 
how effective your efforts are in any role. Yeah. Critically important. Critically yeah. important. Well, Cause not you, because you have to say at all times, I justify my job. Right. right? Cause you don't, you, you just do the best you can. And in general, your the results will come, but because if you're not measuring and you're not monitoring and you're not thinking back, like, Hey, I did, I took specific action in one direction. What if the exact opposite of what you wanted to occur occurred in terms of downstream effects, right? So it's more yeah. about how do I closely calibrate and curate all of my efforts yeah. to have the best impact and, and, and leveraging data to know that. Yeah. I think, you know, knowing, knowing that and, and my experience, I think you're suggesting this as well you, as a, as, as somebody in internal comms, communications, employee experience, whatever it is, if you're in those roles, it's a lot easier to pitch something nutty or something that's experimental or something that's new, or even just to have that back and forth on this email that sounds crazy and you need to simplify it and get it out. If you have the data, you can just be like, oh, well, just let the data do it. I'll eat, right. I'll, you know, I'll eat crow if your passive voice performs better than my active voice. Right, goes out. right. Yeah. And let me be very clear on what I'm referring to, because I want to make sure that the audience understands what the question The question was, you know, whether your IC department has uh, clearly stated goals. i uh, sorry, clearly stated. Our IC function has a clearly stated charter and measurable goals. Yeah. Right. That And that, from a baseline perspective, to me, is if you're running a, un a business unit, like that's the first thing. That's the thing you start with. Maybe you start yep. with a vision and then you move on to the charter, but it's like hand in glove. One of the most important things you do, not only from like the way you communicate to executives and people who fund your unit, but also how yeah. you communicate to your employees, how you recruit and retain people, your employment brand within your unit, which is critically important. So I found that surprising, maybe a little, like didn't make me feel happy. The opposite <laughs> of what I normally feel, right? It's, and then one the one more thing. Yeah. I got I got one I got one more for you. Yeah. Um and that one is I'm I'll, I'll get around to good news later, I promise. But <laughs> less than half of uh, 48% of IC teams leverage uh dynamic targeting. And what I mean by that is instead of sending every communication the exact same way to every single person in the organization, <clears throat> which intuitively, you know, does not work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's like 52% of our respondents just send the same message out to everyone. 48% create specific communications for specific audiences. Uh, some of them, um, they send out, everyone receives all communications, but they arrange content by audience, which is like mm -hmm. halfway there. You know what I mean? So maybe everybody gets the same newsletter, but if you're in sales, the sales stuff is first. If you're in manufacturing, the manufacturing stuff is first. But either of those sort of categories of targeting, uh, dynamic targeting, yield much better outcomes in terms of uh, IC efficacy and performance, the likelihood that they get, uh, you know, the budget they request for the year or budget increases every year, and better yeah. outcomes for the employees for sure. Um, in terms of uh, consumption and ingestion and actually opening or reading of the, of the content that you're sending out. Yeah. Do you, do you envision, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are some verbatims that, that come with, uh, come with the survey and, and this doesn't go into details on this, but you, you personally, do you see something like generative AI or AI being leveraged to the, to the, to the point that it's, we talk about this like right information, right time, right audience, that kind of stuff that goes together. And, and AI could help with all of those things. I'm wondering if it's uh, like when you mentioned that I might serve the sales content up a little bit higher, is the voice different? Is the content different? Is sort of like that, like, is, is, is that, I guess, some of what you think when you think targeting uh, when getting out to employees? I mean, when I, okay, a couple of things. When I see this data, I want to just start with the fundamentals. Sure. Right? When I see that more than half of uh, groups are not even targeting at all, I want to start with the fundamentals, which is, and AI is very good at this, right? Because it's really just mm -hmm. data. It's not necessarily static data, 
but it is like it's almost binary uh, or yeah. it's you know what group are you in did you open the last uh or did you open and or read the last message that went out did you go yeah. through the training like these things are all just very they're not at all soft stuff it's very hard uh right. hard data so ai can be very good at that in terms of segmenting and sorting right yeah here's the organizational hierarchy so we know what group everybody's in here's the stats and the telemetry on whether people interacted with communications in the past and how right yeah. and ai can do that in its sleep basically the other piece of ai that really works and is helpful in internal communications is the part that you just described which is how do we write something that is more likely to capture eyes so if you have the right sort of integrations, data integrations in your uh, comms telemetry, and you're putting putting AI an AI layer on top of that, it can yeah. look at what, you know, how did you interact with specific comms that came through specific channels that were written in a specific way, and then spit out the most optimal approach to getting eyes by segment, right? Which is yeah. like yeah. the next level version of, you know, you go down the bunny hill when you're skiing, that's like, let's send out a communication. Then you get to the, you know, the greens, and then it's like, let's send out the communication to the right group at the right time. And, and then on and on until you're on the double black diamond, which is like the right channel. So yep. lots of people don't necessarily have email in this world. If you're a right. frontline worker or you're manufacturing, whatever, maybe you have Slack, maybe you just have a handheld, maybe you have a kiosk in your warehouse, right? Yep. So I, there's, we, we, we need to think multi-channel and we need to think about and leverage the tools we have. Thank God over the past year, we've gotten the significantly better, more evolved tools. We need to think about channel. We need to think about content, just like <clears throat> you described. And we need to think yeah. about ingestion and like, you know, how do people, how, what are the, what, how do we money ball the approach to <laughs> what we're trying to educate our employees on in a way that influences it to more likely result in uh, a read or an open, an, a, a digestion or an absorption. And then the ultimate outcome, the downstreamest effect is yeah. behavior change that leads to some sort of organizational KPI impact, right? Yeah. And as yeah. a human being, all of that could take me hours just to send out one communication, right? But thank goodness that there's plenty of technology tools, not the least of which are like AI powered employee experience platforms like Simpler mm -hmm. that can serve all that information up to you in a frictionless way. And then even leveraging generative AI gets you started on what you want to write. Because I, I mean, you certainly uh, make a career and in, in doing these amazing interviews and shows and podcasts, whatever, like. Sometimes you probably sit down and go like, what am I even going to ask this person? Or like, How do I even, <laughs> I got to get smart on X, Y, and Z. What do I going to, you know what? The number one thing that, that I see that helps a lot of people is just overcoming inertia. An object at rest stays at rest. Right, like, right. Generative AI can get you off, can give you that push, right? Get me in yeah. motion, get me started. Um, and we can talk about ethical AI and how to do this in a governed way, maybe on a whole nother show. Um, but yeah. the fact of the matter is that the tools and resources that internal comms teams have in March of 2024, light years ahead of what we even had in January, 2021. Right. Yeah. And yeah. If you move fast to adopt that, your ability to execute and drive downstream effects will improve in a commensurate fashion. Mm -hmm. I love that you talk about the, the, the inertia, the, you know, for writers, it's the the fear yeah. of the the blank page. Um, but de developers, Mark, like anybody, yeah. it's like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna take the next step or do this other thing, and just getting, you know, Anne Lamott talks about. Uh, <clears throat> she calls it <laughs> first drafts. She's like, you got to mm -hmm. get good at that. It's just like getting it out, and now you've got something yeah. that can help you not just come up with an idea or a project plan or, yeah. hey, we could try this. Um, that that's that's, that's super helpful. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and I want everybody to be very careful because like your first chat GPT draft or Gemini or whatever you use is right, going to be right. crap because like <laughs> it's scraping the entirety of publicly available and or licensed uh, 
information sources to like spit out whatever. But like sometimes all you need is just a little nudge to get you started or help with an outline or like it's it's so bad. Like, I'll you know, you type it in and you get the and like that's terrible. But the fact that you even know it's terrible gets you started. Like, why is it terrible? You know why. Boom, I'm right. writing things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And speed has been achieved. Now, granted, the other stuff is like how to, the the data and the information about how to target and exactly what right. channels to use. That stuff is, you know, is is gravy. But the getting started yeah. part is, you know, I like it's. A good I don't feature. know. You know, I may like any communication, like any emails, Slack messages, anything I send to you. I think I may feed through now and say, "Can you write this in the style of William Gibson?" Yeah. Uh, oh, that'd be great. Then, at, yeah, and then send it to you. I will be, be wow, riveted. Love, like, yeah, oh my I gosh. love this guy. <laughs> the detail in the prose is unbelievable. <laughs> well, that's that's what's fascinating about what you said is getting to the point where I might I might treat the sales department different. I might treat engineering different. I might treat the support functions different and the voice, tone, how it shows up. Maybe some people like the Socratic method back and forth to get yeah. questions answered and things like that. But eventually being able to get all the way to the individual level, like maybe you have somebody in engineering that really likes to get information like somebody in marketing does. And being able sure. to figure out like who that is, how they self, yeah. And let's not forget, it doesn't even have to be in text anymore, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we can yeah, generate yeah, video, yeah. audio content, video content, whatever. Uh, or we will be very soon in a in a way that is as good, if not better, right? Because in this fast paced world of distractedness, maybe not everybody out there is going to read two thousand words on you know the new communication policy. No, that's that's right. right. Those go in there and say, "Come on, what do I? Re you know right. me." Although those are probably pretty robot. important words, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell me what I need to tell me what I need to know. Uh, sum up, which uh, which is exactly. which is a really common thing. A lot of people are doing now with yeah with ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever. Right. Yeah. But you yeah. have to be careful. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say it again. You can't just go out to public ChatGPT or Gemini with your company information. Uh, one right. of the things we talked about, uh, particularly in follow up with a lot of different respondents and on our in our state of internal communications virtual summit um, or our internal communications virtual summit is yeah. having a, a, a general AI policy mm -hmm. that's highly governed and that ensures mm -hmm. that people aren't taking internal confidential information or any com company information for that matter out into yeah. the public uh, model, right? Because yeah. just like you know, you're not going to bring out your trade secrets and post it in your New York Times pre-internet. Yeah. Like you don't want to be training this large language model on company specific confidential information. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make sense to a certain degree as a, as a HR team or IC team, you want to use something that's leveraging the data that's important to you, which isn't necessarily the entire internet. I mean, maybe for vo voice or tone or getting ideas or things mm -hmm. like that, but you're going to need a place where the data resides so that if you're like, hey, you know what, I want to write this and I want this to go out in Slack. I want this to go into email. I want this to post to Simpler. Um, and however people consume their information, we're meeting them wherever they're at. But where am I, where am I getting it uh, in the first yes. place in order to do that? Unique to my organization, that's what I got to start with as far as data set, right? And I will say it, it's my opinion that the more we the more we reduce the more we reduce reliance on email and slack communications mm -hmm. the better we will be in terms of speed and access to information and frictionless elements of productivity and what i mean yeah. by that is we get some of us get hundreds of emails and slacks per day and so mm -hmm. if i'm sending out some critical communication then those are automatically the most crowded channels but if you have a centralized, holistic, and very broad area of information that hopefully can access information across all different platforms within your organization, yeah. you've immediately created a place that people, A, will go to as their primary source, right? Mm -hmm. And B, will be assuming you're using one of the you know modern ones that exist, right? Now, I know right. I'm very biased. <laughs> will actually can be served up the information you need on on your front page, right? A dashboard, yeah. not just to how you work and what you do and how you access your technology and applications, but actually 
something that helps you be more productive as opposed to gives you another needle in the haystack or a hay stalk in a haystack, right? You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. We're we're eliminating, you know, single point of failures, right? Just like emailing everything and and we're increasing our employees' ability to have that positive employee experience, right? Which incorporates technology experience as it never has before. Yeah. You know, I, I, so pressing, because you probably know this and I, and I won't put you on the spot with the data in the report, but I believe it, it covers this as well is how, how many people are using a space like that instead of just Slack or just email or because it, it, like all companies, it, it got super, super hot in the early 2000s. We're like, guess what? We're going to create the int internet internally. Right. Uh, so you can go there to get that, but it seems like it's always been a little bit of this uphill battle of go there or RTFM or mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like it, it hasn't been, we haven't been able to meet them uh, where they're, where they're going. What I'm, I'm wondering if, if, if you, and I'm sure this is a conversation at, at simpler, you're part of coming yeah. with the data and coming with the information, do you, like how do we get people sort of like headed that direction? Any thoughts, any ideas so that yeah. it's not, it's no longer a, geez, don't give me someplace else to go uh, to right. find this stuff. Well, so that's the thing, right? The, first of all, we did study it, just like you said, only 48% yeah. of the respondents indicated that they have a company intranet. Oh, wow. Uh, my theory on that, and we're running a supplemental uh, survey to dig more deeply into a number of different areas so we constantly have a feed on information and the and stay ahead of trends in in internal communications. Yeah, my theory on that is that a lot of companies just have content management systems, right? So like a giant warehouse of, or let's call it a junk drawer where you just toss all your stuff, right? <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. Hello. Maybe that's too much of a sick yeah. burn, but I'm saying it right. Hello, it's a wiki. Place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's where everything lives. Right. Is it yeah. well organized? Is it accessible? Is it integrated with other uh, sources of information? Absolutely not. They would have answered differently if they felt that way, right? Yeah. And so that does not come. And think of all the jobs you've worked at where, like, you've got like just one giant. Like, I go to X, Y. I don't want to name names, but I go to X, Y, and Z, and then I search mm -hmm. for, you know, presentation on digital experience of blah, blah, whatever, the graphic user interface yeah. of this tool, right? And you right, get right. like 72 pages worth of responses. You're like, that's not at all helpful. And it definitely mm -hmm. was like, this one's from 1996 and that's the top response, right? Yeah. So the first thing we need to do is to make it good and maybe make it great, right? So that not only are you, do you have one place to go as opposed mm -hmm. to another place to go, Yes. You have a place that you kind of want to go and that does serve up actual value, right? Because if there's value, people don't go to Starbucks because they want to pay $8 for a coffee. They go to Starbucks because they pay $8 <laughs> for a coffee and they like it. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing. There are coffee shops that have better atmospheres than Starbucks, but Starbucks right. makes it super. They have their own app. They <clears> give <throat> you rewards. They have all kinds of food things. They got, they've really curated <clears throat> the experience in a way that people want, to, they're in the right places, right? They want to go. Yeah. You can do the same with your, let's call it employee digital workspace or employee hub, right? Right. In the sense that all day, every day, you need access to information, mm -hmm. right? Or you need access to resources, or you need to go on your laptop and get whatever app you need to work on. And mm -hmm. we know that, you know, from other research that I've done at previous organizations, like 38% of people are feeling serious burnout um, pains or symptoms, mm -hmm. right? And the number one correlate to that is inefficient systems and processes, right? You can't get done what you want to get done. You can't access the stuff you need to access. You can't access the people, right? But if you create essentially like a time machine, not a go back in time machine, but a <laughs> how do I save myself time machine? Maybe yeah. it's a speed up the time machine then you literally can create value for these people. One place where you access all your apps, one place where it serves up the information you need, one place where you have a chat bot that can help you get done what you need to get done. One place that has, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
answers generated through AI that aren't just serving you up 72 pages of results, but says, hey, it looks like you might be looking for the policy on, you know, wearing flip flops to the office, <laughs> right? That's We're in specific Silicon Valley, policy. basically. That's you right. Know, well, you can wear flip flops, <laughs> right? Yeah, Rapid yeah, growth yeah. tech, or you know, we're a law firm. Like, why would you even ask that question? You're so dumb, right? <laughs> Maybe not that aggressive, but in any case, I, w- I would, I would <laughs> like that if that's what the response was. Uh, right? Custom for me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never worked as a lawyer, but in my mind, everybody's constantly yelling at you. In any case, <laughs> we, we're creating not a go not a time machine like uh you know go back in time machine but a save you time reduce friction yeah. right where everything is served up at your fingertips in a way that not only helps you get your job done helps you be more productive reduces cycle time on search and and access to information and by the way can help you eliminate some of the administrative tasks or recognize your peers or any of the things that you want to do on a day-to-day basis that are mm-hmm. not the like high value stuff that drives cre- crazy impact at your job, but instead yeah, helps yeah. lift you up so you can do the best work that you can possibly do in the most efficient manner possible. Yeah. And that's how you create the Starbucks of, uh, you know, organizational platform. <laughs> when you, so shifting, shifting gears just a, a tiny bit, but it's but certainly related with these, with these teams, the survey, uh, the results show kind of what makes, internal comms teams highly effective like yes. what do we what do we learn about teams um that are that are doing well what are what are they yeah. doing to do things well so uh okay a couple of different things first of all we did what's called a max diff analysis and okay. let's not go too deeply into that what's, yeah what's like, a max met max diff you know i'm i'm an, all, i'm a, i'm a writer not a, not a math <laughs> yeah right so uh the max diff analysis it basically presents different scenarios and different attributes and characteristics to the survey respondents uh, mm-hmm. and helps them um, generate uh, like the value and strength and scale of each of the different attributes or characteristics. It basically mm-hmm. requires that the respondents evaluate possible pairs of items and choose the pair that reflects the maximum level or difference in importance. Okay, okay. Okay. So, and like, just basically it's, it's a way to understand people's preferences, but also the strength and importance of the things that we're showing to them. Okay. 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 And we found a couple of things, and these are more about like the characteristics of an individual internal communication, right? Okay. If we're sending out a piece that has information, <clears throat> the top three elements that lead to high effectiveness of that communication as reported by respondents. Like, is it authentic? Is it credible? Right. Do people believe it to be the truth? And is it engaging? Right. Did I fall asleep while reading it? It's probably not the best thing. And then like a couple of, you know, also highly ranked elements. Is it timely and is it Mm -hmm. actionable? Right. So, um, right. We want to know, if someone comes to me and says, how do I write a great communication or how do I generate a great piece, uh, you know, whatever multimedia piece, right? First, we want it to come from a place uh, like a, a human centered place. Right? Mm-hmm. Is it authentic? Do am yep. I, Does it sound like it's complete BS? People are not going to like it. They're going to talk about <laughs> it outside. You know, you're going to get right. the negative yeah, yeah. income. And luckily, right? Like the, that's like a pretty fundamental element and most uh, IC groups. And we asked this as well, like not only what's the importance, but how well did you perform? Most groups indicated that they uh, perform pretty well on authenticity. Yeah. Yeah. Now we also asked respondents whether they felt like their team overall was like highly effective or not so effective, like how good, is your the impact you generate as a result of your internal communications like how well would yeah. you rank your performance so in the aggregate like 80 percent of people felt like they're they were very authentic yeah but that's 100 percent. well not 100 percent, but largely driven by the highly effective teams oh, so okay the teams okay. that feel like they did not have great impact and their the performance of their ic team was not phenomenal over the last year 
only 40% of them felt like their communications were authentic. Only 35% of them felt they were credible. 30% said timely, 15% actionable. So like when we get down to the part where I said earlier, like I really just want to work on fundamentals yeah. for many of the IC teams, like getting things out on time strikes me as a baseline element. Yeah. Right. Like we're going to play basketball. I need you to learn to dribble mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and doing things in a credible way. Like I feel like that's like shooting where these are fundamental Huge. things. Mm -hmm. Now the highly effective teams were like, felt like they were very incredibly credible. 89% felt like they were very credible. 84% engaging, you know, 83% timely. And so like, we've got some, we've got best practices out there that will help us execute on what we need to execute on. But when you're thinking about, you're sitting down and you're going to get started on crafting a critical communication to go out to a critical populations, authentic, credible, engaging, and timely, like I'm giving you four now, are the things that you should center yourself around in order to get that, um, you know, 75 to 100% uh, open and consumption rate and feel like the effects your downstream effects you're having of your efforts are tangible and out and and out there in the in the organization to create yeah. the behavior change that you want yeah it feels uh i could be really wrong on this i'm wrong 62.7 percent of the time same, but same. you uh <laughs> do you it builds chicken and egg a little bit like you've got the high performing teams who are like yeah, yeah we're really good at this and yeah. then the people that, and then, and then we're really bad at this. We're not a high performing yeah. team. Um, right. is, is, are there any other factors that we learn that contribute to a team becoming high performing? Be, like beyond like, uh, what I've always called the empathy, advocacy, and truth, which is that yeah. have credibility, be honest, um, you know, build trust, be engaging, things like that. Is there any other things that we sort of learn that help make an IC team, um, high performing beyond, Hey, we're really good at this stuff. Or is it more of just a, yeah. a talent? We hired the right people. No, no, it's not. It, it, okay. Well, first of all, hiring the right people is a critical element for everything. <laughs> there are a few, you say no, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to disagree with, with, with like established <laughs> definite fact. Um, but there are a few things that absolutely, uh, we think are great that from the data, but also from our experts and, general expertise, which is like the, the creating the charter and measurable goals, right? You have to plan yeah. for success. Yeah. You really need to figure out like, what are you hoping to achieve and how are you going to measure that? So you can set your North star to give yourself a goal to reach. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the next piece of that is like, how do you understand what your audience truly needs and how do you curate what you're doing in order to reach that level that, that uh, that that your your audience indicates is important, and that in itself, those two things right there will set you off on the right path. The other thing to do is to make sure you're publishing your content or deploying your communications for a purpose. Yeah. Um, anecdotally, we know that credibility and timeliness and authenticity are decreased or decelerated um, if you're just if the pace of everything is just nonstop like a fire hose of information, right? That's, yeah. that's going to result in non-optimal outcomes, no matter what, just because you, there's no way for your people to keep up and still do their job. Remember their job is not to ingest uh, information. It's <laughs> to, to do their what job and your job is right to support that. Right. <laughs> right no matter right. what I think in my own, you know, uh, inner monologue, like not everybody's job is to figure out what I'm doing and then celebrate. Um, right. The, <laughs> so, so being measured and 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 being intentional right is is a strength rather than a, a weakness in terms of certainly the the authenticity and credibility and that's intuitive but the timeliness as well right cuz you'll be much more on time if you're publishing less but higher quality content and then and then finally we um absolutely saw the uh, 
more a much higher likelihood. We absolutely saw a much higher likelihood of high effectiveness if you are targeting um, people to with the right information at the right time and using dynamic uh, channeling, meaning mm. you know, don't send people Slack messages who don't use Slack or email right. messages who only have access to uh, a device or a kiosk at certain times during the day. Meet them yeah, where you yeah. are and be cognizant of the effect that has, as well as like, these are, you're, you're reaching out to your coworkers. You want things to be easy and feel good and feel personalized for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So be cognizant. Of that makes things. sense. Yeah. You know, um, a couple more things. One of them I, I know traditionally, um, I see teams, it, if they have the buy-in at the leadership level, so executive level, everything that they're working yep. on, they, they at least seem to believe that their job's a lot easier and they'll be more sure. effective. Is it, Would you suggest these types of things, like having a clear mission, um, like targeting, you have to measure to make sure that you're getting those things right. Is that is that a path to getting buy-in uh, with, with executives and other people that, that would then make your job a little bit easier? Yes, for sure. So there's a couple of things uh, around that, which is number one, we actually researched where um, teams sat in the organization, oh, right? Like, did you, does IC report up to, do they have their own group, right? Or do they roll up to human resources or IT or, you know, do you not know, right? And we definitely <laughs> saw... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not joking. Ten percent. I know you're oh, looking at it. Five <laughs> percent like, yeah. of teams don't know where who they roll up to, right? Maybe they just didn't like the question and didn't answer. But um, yeah, the interesting thing was if you reported up to HR or IC, basically not IT, you were much more likely to get a budget increase last year, oh, right? or for this year. And yeah. so, um, and you're, and you're mildly more likely to be, um, rate yourself as highly effective, right? So there's definitely an effect on, um, your resources and the ability to do your job. Well, if you are rolled up to a team that truly understands and values internal communications, and I'm talking generalities, like there are lots mm -hmm. of it teams that are incredibly, um, progressive and, and very strategic, so I don't want no, don't don't call me uh, yeah, chief. Don't dox me. Of IT, IT that I don't know what teams. I'm talking about. Uh, right, exactly. Don't slack me. And um, <laughs> and the same thing goes with like your ability to get more budget. Right, if you were in yeah. HR or rolled up to IT, uh, rolled up to your own IC team, much more likely to get um, budget increase. Now, that in itself suggests potentially, you know, anecdotally again that the leaders of those teams, the executive leaders of those teams value the work you're doing and are more likely to be supportive of the work you're doing and more likely to be engaged. And we absolutely saw, you know, effects around leadership engagement in terms of effectiveness and how likely uh, employees are to, um, to consume the information if you had good and strong and frequent leadership engagement. Now, it's not always the case. In fact, leadership engagement was not, it was, I would say highly, it was highly variable throughout this study, right. but there's definite um, value and impact of A, proving and continuing to communicate your value and impact on the organization to senior and executive leaders, and then B, in turn, asking them and getting them to be highly engaged and to amplify the um, the messages that you're trying to distribute and to help mm -hmm. with the targeting and the highlighting of critical elements of knowledge and learning that you're, you're hoping to deploy. Yeah. It's super, super helpful. I mean, this is just rich, rich, rich with data. I've gone, I've gone, I've, I've gone through the report and having done this. Oh my goodness. 25 years now, um, not a young whippersnapper doing this type of work. It's just, same, same. well, it's just great to see some of it confirms and some of it is, yeah. oh, that is interesting. Oh, that is surprising um, that you don't know where you, where you report up to in an right. organization. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Right. Well, let's like sort of finally what let's crystal ball this a little bit sure. um, from your perspective, and what you've been seeing. And I know that you're super data driven. So me saying like, all right, let's get woo woo and you predict the future. But what what do you think? Because you've seen you've seen the trends over years. You've been doing this for a little while. Yeah. What, what would you predict we're, we're going to start to see in, in 2025 um, in internal comms? Yes. Well, the number one thing that I think we're seeing across the board is better integrations of different data sources and different platforms, right? No longer having to, as an internal comms person, doesn't just, their job isn't just writing copy, right? There's a right. lot that goes right. into it. And their ability to frictionlessly go from uh, platform to platform or app to app or program to program has been significantly increased. Like it's, it's gotten way better. Mm-hmm. The channels that we are able to use to reach people are going to be so much more robust. I mean, how far in the future do we want to go? There's augmented reality considerations oh, that yeah. can help. And in fact, lots of manufacturing and healthcare uh, organizations and units are already using augmented reality, which could be a great, since they're using it to help them mm-hmm. perform their tasks, it's a much better channel than email or Slack or even, you know, native video in a, in a, on a website or whatever. But I right. think that in a little bit more near term, I think video and multimedia is going to have a, a, an upsurge and not necessarily through, because you can't really host video in an email. You're always pushing people out to another thing. Hosting right. that in your, on your intranet or your employee experience platform and yep. serving it up to a person dynamically, as opposed to sort of, trying to you know ping them uh in parallel to whatever they're doing please, right please go look at my video please it, go look it, at my right, video right like yeah. i get an email please watch this video to hear the new whatever to whatever new behavior you're supposed to do like you're automatically by having someone take another action you're automatically decreasing the response rate or the ingestion yeah. rate right so the frictionless uh uh approach to serving up information to people in a centralized location where they all go when they open up their computer or they put on their AR goggles or they are checking their handheld or they're in a retail space and they log into their um, you know, POS system or they're right, in healthcare right. and you go to the, you know, the nurse's station, right? All those mm-hmm. areas, it's are great places to deploy the critical information they need but you have to do it in a way that they're more likely to ingest and you have to make their lives easier around that to obtain information that you're, is not just by like a push notification. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. so the ecosystem of, of intelligence and information around them, around people and employees, no matter what their uh, work dynamic is, is going to be uh, higher speed, easier to access. And I think much more robust. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's, here's to hoping, you know, I mean, yeah. I know you bring up the nurse's station kind of idea, but I'm sitting at my desk at home right now, uh, staring at you, but I go to sit down to work and up on the wall in one corner, you know, I've got my glasses on or whatever. Yeah. And there's the latest news on my wall. Um, mm-hmm. cause I've set up the space and th- this is where, this is where I work and I can, I can talk to people that way and see that information. Um, that's like just having more of those places where you can get that information and, and serve it up. That's remarkable. That's definitely right? It'll be William Gibson esque. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. much so. Very much so. It's the, <laughs> but it's science fiction, but it's like sort of halfway. It's almost science fact. We're almost there. We're getting close. Well, where else, where can I send people? Where, where can people go to learn to see uh, the results, to see the report uh, places like that? Yes, go to simpler.com, S-I-M-P-P-L-R.com, and then go to the resources tab, and you'll find all different information, all types of information about all the research we're doing, um, which is all highly valuable. And then absolutely um, check out the state of internal comms report, uh, as well as like some of the analyst information that's out there from Gartner and Forrester, because it is eye-opening going on what's out there and what is um headed our way in terms of near and far future very cool well jordan thanks so much for joining for chatting with me for 
putting you. up with my pushback on the uh, different places uh, to go. This has been a pleasure. Thank you. Feel free to write in the chat all the real insults that you're thinking about me that may or may not be so positive. <laughs> that wasn't the question that was asked, but I've got a thick skin, so bring in the noise. <laughs> right on. Thanks, Steve. All right. Thank you. Thank you.